Hi folks, today I want to talk a bit about austerity. We could, well, I don't actually want to talk about it, but I feel like we have to because we have already heard Mitch McConnell and the Republicans and corporate Democrats like Chris Coons sharing their allegedly serious concerns about the deficit. So we have to. Um, I don't think I need to remind you that we are in the middle of a public health crisis right now. And the failure of our government has killed 83,000 people. Their failure has also allowed this public health crisis to cascade into an economic crisis. Rather than protect American people, their actions prioritize corporations, cost tens of millions of people their jobs, increased our housing instability, and they tried to smooth it over with a one-time payment of $1,200 to some people, many of whom still haven't received it. So even as we haven't done nearly enough to support people, we now hear the concerns about the deficit. And what always quickly follows concerns about the deficit are demands for austerity. So what do I mean by austerity? Austerity is a set of policies enacted with the goal of redu reducing budget deficits. But it's what we hear when Congress people mean when they say things like needing to tighten our belts. But in practice, it pretty much always means that we need to cut programs that working people rely on. And deficit reduction is something that Senator Coons has been talking about since he took office. In 2010 and 2011, he repeatedly said that all options are on the table when asked whether cuts to Social Security and Medicare may need to be done to address the deficit. In 2012 and 2013, he advocated for policies in Simpson-Bowles, which would have capped government spending at 20% of GDP, excuse me, 21% of GDP, but that's a disastrous policy during crisis times when GDP falls. Uh, it would have also reduced Medicare and Medicaid spending, and it would have cut Social Security benefits by increasing the beneficiary age to 69. The severity of the impacts of Simpson Bowles would have required cuts in programs that low-income people rely on, like housing and Head Start and nutrition assistance. So this has been part of Senator Coons' agenda from the beginning. And just last month, he was quoted in the news journal expressing deficit concerns again. And I understand that it sounds logical. If you think of the U.S. budget like your own household budget, if we lose our income, we have to find ways to save money every month to survive. But this is a myth when it's applied to the U.S. budget. Our government does not rely solely on tax revenues. Our government can use monetary policy to increase the supply of money, which is exactly what it did when it bailed out corporations in March. And it's exactly what should be done now in a time of need to bail out the American people. We already know that there was gross wealth inequality in our society before this crisis. And of course, like every crisis before it, the effects are being felt across those same well-worn lines of inequality. And austerity just makes inequality worse. Even the International Monetary Fund has studied and shown this. It has shown that austerity cuts increase inequality, they increase instability, and it undermines growth, which is the stated goal of austerity anyway. So instead, what we need right now is a commitment from our government to invest in its people, to actually build the strong foundation that we all need to live dignified lives. We need stronger unemployment benefits that go to more people and offer more benefits. We need guaranteed paid sick leave and quality childcare. We need additional direct payments absolutely through the duration of this crisis. We need to invest in federal jobs to rebuild our infrastructure, put people back to work, increase our research and our technological and our scientific case capabilities. And it goes without saying that we need Medicare for all. Now is not the time to cut what little support our government provides people. It is time to expand it. And if there's genuine concern about the deficit and debt, fine. Then start with actually taxing the people and the corporations at the very, very top before you even think about coming for the needs of working people.